night of April 12, Sherman's army was encamped in an arc about 12 miles to the southeast of Raleigh. Johnston's army evacuated the city that same day. Two former governors of North Carolina, David L. Swain and William A. Graham, had got together and realized that um, North Carolina had fought so hard for its state university, the state insane asylum, the state capital, and for a state that had been long looked at as the Rip Van Winkle, sort of that lagging behind state, that these, um, these great edifices of the state, which they had fought so hard um, to gain through the 1850s and, and early 1860s through these internal improvements, could be destroyed in the wink of the eye with these advancing federal soldiers. They decided that they would ride out and somehow negotiate a peace settlement to sort of preserve these institutions that the state had fought so hard for. After conferring with Vance, the current governor, Swain and Graham met with Sherman and reached a deal to spare the state's important buildings as well as the university in Chapel Hill. On April 13, Raleigh was formally surrendered to Kilpatrick, whose cavalry was in the vanguard of federal forces. Vance fled to Greensboro, but the truce and the city's fate were threatened when a group of straggling Confederate cavalrymen rode up Fayetteville Street, dismounted, and tried to break into a jewelry store. Swain and other citizens confronted the horsemen, and the situation became tense. Not until Union forces parading up the street came into view did the riders disperse. But inexplicably, the leader of this small group gets on his horse and just stands there and waits. And as this parade grows, comes up the street and gets closer, the trooper whips out his pistol and begins firing down Fayetteville Street, saying, Hurrah for the Southern Confederacy! Empties his pistol, turns his horse, and dashes down Morgan Street. The only problem is that Morgan Street does not go out of town. At the time, it ran into, it dead ends into the, the railroad tracks. So, the, realizing his mistake, he whips his horse around and he falls. He remounts before he can get away. He's captured by Kilpatrick staff officers and brought before uh, the general who is now on the Capitol grounds. Differing accounts of the Confederate cavalryman's interaction with Kilpatrick exist, but the lone defender of Raleigh, identified as Lieutenant Walsh of the 11th Texas Cavalry, would be hung from a nearby tree. His body was reburied in the city's Oakwood Cemetery in 1867. As Union troops began the occupation of Raleigh, a group of soldiers entered the state capitol building. So when Union soldiers come into the house chambers where we are now, they see it ringed with flags. Not only Confederate flags, but Union flags that have been war trophies from the battlefields in Virginia and Tennessee. Um, they even asked the black custodian, where are the rest of the flags? And he at first pleads ignorance, not knowing where they were. And then once he realizes that emancipation has just arrived with these federal soldiers, he kind of looks around and says, you might want to try those boxes over there, which contains more of these flags. Federal soldiers rush up to the attic to sort of take down the stars and bars and hoist the stars and stripes. And as they're going up, they pass these huge round pieces of glass. And these were the lenses taken from the lighthouses on the coast, which rendered them un un unusable by um, the Federal Navy. Federal soldiers would also establish a signal station on the dome of the Capitol, which could be seen from a great distance. Overall, the occupying army enjoyed its two-week stay in Raleigh, and the capital sees little of the damage that other southern cities and towns suffered. What appealed to, I think, Union soldiers in Raleigh is that it's, it is not an ostentatious capital. It's a very um, moderate capital. It's very um, pragmatic. It's not large. It's small. The streets are shaded by the oak trees, which give the Raleigh its nickname, the City of Oaks. The houses are modest. Again, it's sort of Union soldiers notice it lacks sort of that quintessential ostentation, is that slaveholding that they've seen through South Carolina and through the huge plantations of Georgia, which they did not find a lot of in North Carolina. 